over reliance on on OPP to enforce the speed limits. The chapter also notes that design elements should be incorporated into a road to help achieve the goals and objectives. Next, chapter six discusses variable conditions and discusses the impacts that weather and congestion may have on travel speeds. And chapter seven discusses the legislative requirements for setting speed limits. It notes that the provincial government has published the Highway Traffic Act, which provides a default statutory speed limit of 80 kilometers per hour in rural areas and 50 kilometers per hour in urban built up areas. However, each municipality's council is authorized to pass speed limit bylaws to prescribe speed limits that deviate from the default statutory speed limits. Previously, the Highway Traffic Act allowed municipalities to prescribe speed limits between 40 to 100 kilometers per hour in 10 kilometer per hour increments. However, an amendment to the Highway Traffic Act now allows municipalities to set the speed limit as low as 30 kilometers per hour. Moving on to chapter eight, this chapter discusses important considerations for setting speed limits. It notes that the minimum length of speed zones should be one kilometer in rural areas and 500 meters in urban areas. Speed zones that are shorter than these lengths may make it more difficult for drivers to adjust their speed accordingly. It also notes that localized elements such as sharp curves should not be used to justify a reduced speed limit over an entire roadway. Instead, advance warning signs and advisory speeds should be used to address localized elements. Next, Chapter 9 discusses the use of community safety zones. Currently, the town has 42 community safety zones. Roads have been designated as community safety zones in the vicinity of schools, parks, daycare centers, hospitals, and retirement residences. And the community safety zones have a posted speed limit of 40 kilometers per hour in urban areas and 60 kilometers per hour in rural areas. Moving on to the last two chapters, Chapters 10 and 11 contain the proposed speed limit policy. A table is provided which contains the proposed maximum speed limit for each classification of road and environment. As you may recall, roads are classified as arterial, collector, or local roads in the town's transportation master plan. The policy notes that roads can also be further classified as major or minor roads based on traffic volumes and notes that collector roads can be classified as minor roads when the average daily traffic volume is less than 2,000 vehicles. The policy also notes that the 85th percentile speed should be the starting point for setting speed limits and that speed limits should not be set below the 67th percentile speed, otherwise the speed limit would be unrealistically low. Moreover, the policy also contains a procedure for requesting speed limit revisions and responding to these requests. It notes that residents, it notes that requests should be made to council, who will then relay these requests to the manager of roads, and the manager of roads must submit a report to council with rationale and an engineering study to recommend whether a requested speed limit revision should be approved or not. Finally, upon Council's review of the report, Council may approve or deny the proposed speed limit revision. It should be noted that the policy outlined in Chapters 10 to 11 doesn't fully cover all the details of the process that staff follow for the selection of speed limits in the town. So I'll be providing additional details now. For roads classified as local residential roads, the policy does not provide a recommended speed limit. As such, the town has established 50 km per hour speed limits on local residential roads to align with the province's statutory speed limit, and we've established 40 km per hour speed limits in urban community safety zones near schools, parks, senior residences, and other areas with vulnerable pedestrians. We have received requests for speed limit reductions in local residential areas, 
but these requests have been put on hold for now and we have reviewed the war warrants for traffic calming measures such as speed humps instead. We plan to review the requests for speed limit reductions on local residential roads during the update of the town's speed limit policy. With regards to roads classified as collector and arterial roads, the maximum speed limit recommended by the policy has been implemented by staff. For instance, speed limits for rural roads in the town vary from 60 to 80 kilometers per hour, and they do not exceed the policy's recommended maximum speed limit of 80 kilometers per hour. It should be noted that staff also refer to the Canadian Guidelines for Establishing Posted Speed Limits, which was published by the Transportation Association of Canada, and we refer to those guidelines to help verify what the suitable speed limit for each road is. I'll be discussing those TAC guidelines further in the second part of the presentation. After we review the recommended speed limit from the TAC guidelines, we also review the travel speeds on adjacent road segments to ensure there is a reasonable speed transition zone. And we review the collision history to identify any speed related collisions. And we consult with OPP to see if they have any concerns with the post proposed speed limit. Then we conduct a traffic study to determine whether the 85th percentile speed is close to the proposed speed limit, and we use interpolation to calculate the 67th percentile speed to ensure the proposed speed limit is not below this value. In a few rare cases, the 67th percentile speeds were above the posted speed limit of 80 kilometers per hour on some rural roads, so we kept the posted speed limit at 80 kilometers per hour, even though that was below the 67th percentile speed. After all of those steps, um, staff determine if there is sufficient rationale for modifying the speed limit. A report is brought to council with all the background information, analysis, and staff's recommendations. If council approves the recommended changes, then a speed limit bylaw is passed and the new speed limit is implemented for the requested section of road. So that sums up the process that we follow when we receive speed limit modification requests. And now I'm going to quickly share which areas of the town we receive the most speed limit reduction requests from. The majority of speed limit reduction requests have originated from residents in urban residential areas across Alliston, Beaton, and Tottenham. We've also received speed limit reduction requests from two schools which are located in rural areas with a current speed limit of 60 kilometers per hour. And another notable area is a vertical crest hill on the fourth line just west of 18th Side Road. And lastly, other notable areas include rural to urban road transitions near the entrances and exits of urban areas. So that concludes the first part of the presentation. And before I move on to the, the second part, does anyone have any questions? I think you're good to move on to the second part then, Abley. <laughs> okay. And just to make sure, was the volume okay like in the presentation? Yeah, I, I could hear you. Okay. All right. Now we'll continue with the second part of the presentation. I'll be presenting the Canadian guidelines for establishing posted speed limits which was published by the Transportation Association of Canada. These guidelines outline a list of road safety criteria. They outline risk score categories for each road safety criteria, and they provide a recommended speed limit based on the total risk score. I'm going to briefly go over each road safety criteria. The risk scores are shown for each criteria in the tables below and they differ slightly for urban and rural roads. The scores for rural roads are shown in the tables on the left, while the scores for urban roads are shown in the tables on the right. 
Criteria A1 is the horizontal alignment of a road. A score is assigned based on the number of curves per kilometer. And criteria A2 is the vertical alignment of a road. A score is assigned based on the grade of the road and the percentage of road length with steep grades. And criteria A3 is the lane width. A score is assigned by comparing the lane width to the width that is recommended by the town's engineering standards and path guidelines. Criteria B is roadside hazards, which evaluates the number of non-breakaway fixed objects at the side of the road. Criteria C1 is pedestrian exposure, which evaluates whether the road is used by pedestrians and whether pedestrian facilities are provided. Criteria Criteria C2 is cyclist exposure, which evaluates whether the road is used by cyclists and whether shoulders or cycling facilities are provided. Next, criteria D is the condition of the pavement surface, which evaluates whether the road is a gravel road or a paved road and evaluates the smoothness of the road. Criteria E1 is the number of intersections with public roads which evaluates both the number of intersections and the types of traffic controls at the intersections. Criteria E2 is the number of intersections with public access driveways. And criteria E3 is the number of interchanges, which refers to highway ramps. Criteria F is on-street parking, which evaluates whether on-street parking is permitted and whether it is typically used. And after the base score is assigned for each criteria, the TAC guidelines also provides weighting factors which are multiplied against each base score to obtain the final risk score. The weighting, fact, weighting scores differ slightly for urban and rural roads as shown in the two tables. And after calculating the final risk score for the road segment, the TAC guideline provides a recommended speed limit based on the risk score. The recommended speeds corresponding to the risk scores for rural roads are shown in the tables on this slide, and the recommended speeds corresponding to the risk scores for urban roads are shown on this slide. And finally, I'll be showing an example of how the guidelines can be applied. As noted in part one of the presentation, the fourth line from 900 meters west of 18th side road to 50 meters east of 18th side road has a vertical crest hill. And we have received requests to reduce the current speed limit of 60 kilometers per hour down to 40 kilometers per hour. So we used the TAC guidelines to verify what the recommended speed limit is. We inputted the level of risk for each criteria into the yellow fields, then the TAC guidelines uh, spreadsheet assigned base risk scores and weighting factors, and the spreadsheet calculated the total risk score and provided a recommended speed limit of 60 kilometers per hour. We also ran a test scenario where we artificially increased the risk scores for the first seven criteria, which include the geometric risks. We increased the risk to the maximum risk score just to demonstrate the sensitivity of the tool. After the maximum risk scores were assigned, the recommended speed limit dropped to 50 kilometers per hour, which was still higher than the residents requested speed limit of 40 kilometers per hour. It should be noted that the town also retained a consultant to review the speed limit for the, this section of road, and the consultant provided a recommended posted speed limit of 60 kilometers per hour. As such, the recommendations from the TAC guidelines and from the town's consultant are consistent and show that the TAC guidelines do help to generate appropriate speed limits. That said, Although the TAC guidelines do generate appropriate speed limit recommendations for the vast majority of scenarios, the TAC guidelines note that engineering judgment should be applied for any special circumstances that are not taken into account in the guidelines. And it also notes that the TAC guidelines 
do not address the setting of speed limits in school and playground zones. So that concludes the presentation. Does anyone have any questions? Thanks, Abley. Uh, I was just scrolling through all the faces to see if I saw any hands up, but I don't see any uh, right now. Uh, but thank you for that presentation. Hopefully that gives all the <clears throat> committee members a good idea of um, where we're at with our current speed limit policy, although I know we've we've all reviewed it before, but I think Abley's touched on some of the important um, parts that we should keep in mind, uh, as well as the TAC speed limit tool. Um, I think probably most, if not all, of the members of this committee wouldn't be exposed to that in their daily lives, but um, I think that's something that's going to be very important for the committee to consider um, when we're coming up with recommendations for the new speed limit policy, um, because there's, there are so many different things to consider when setting the speed limit on, on a road, and I think as you've demonstrated, it's a, it's a pretty simple tool to use that just assigns you know a, a low, medium, high risk. It makes you think of all the different hazards and conditions you should be considering. Um, you know, it, it weights them in a fair way to, uh, I guess, allow the town to consistently set speed limits um, throughout the town um, in an equitable way. So I think that'll be something very useful for all the committee members to uh, consider and keep in mind as we move through the process. Um, does anybody have any specific questions about um, the policy or the tool or how it works, anything like that? Nope. All right, well, thanks so much, Abley. David, I think Bill has a question. Oh, sorry. Bill? I... Um, I've seen various studies that um, for the town that shows it the 85% percentile, um, the percentage of exceeding or matching or less than. I've never seen a study for the town that shows the 67% percentile, which is a from what Abley was indicating, maybe I misunderstood, is, is the target more so for uh, speed limit uh, selection? Abley, did you want to answer that? Sure. So the policy recommended that we aim to set the posted speed limit at around the 85th percentile speed. And it also just recommended that we make. We lost, we lost you there, Adley. Hello? Oh, yeah, you're back. Okay, sorry. Um, so I was saying that the policy recommends that we set the posted speed limit at around the 85th percentile speed, if possible. And that like as an extra check, it, it recommends that we make sure the posted speed limit is above the 67th percentile speed as well. Right, yeah, so the, the 67th is basically the, the bottom limit. We don't want to go any lower than that because then you're going to have the majority of drivers um, ignoring the speed limit or likely to ignore the speed limit. I think something to add to that too is you don't want to have a speed differential between the motoring public that is going to abide by the speed limit and those that are not and how they perceive the road. Because if you have that um, differential too far, it, it is statistically shown to provide more injury to the drivers involved in the collision. Right, if everybody's yeah. traveling the, the same speed, there's less chance of a, a collision. Absolutely. Any other questions on this? Yeah, program? I have one more question. Yep, yep. Well, observation from reading all the material on that, um, we can select the speed, but it comes down to uh, calming measures or enforcement to get people to realize this that sign says what you're supposed to be driving. Like, for example, uh, if we were to reduce down to 30 kilometers an hour in, in the um, school zones for right now, we have listed 40 kilometers, which nobody, well, a high percentage are not uh, abiding to. So then this whole traffic um, plan has to have integral some mechanism or everybody on board for 
dollars and cents for enforcement and calming then, right? If we're going to lower speeds. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll see if maybe Rick or Abley have any comments on that in a second, or if any of the other members have anything to say, but I, I guess my view would be that it's, it's a combination of, um, you know, th there will be some cases where traffic calming measures are needed or perhaps enforcement, although obviously that's, we're trying to avoid that as much as possible, just for, for the sake of police resources. Um, but one of the important things to consider is matching speed limits to the road environment. So we want we don't want to set something so low that we know it will be ignored <laughs> completely. It, it's a bit of a balancing act, I guess, is what is is what I'm trying to say. Where you have to consider the road environment itself, and then those other elements as well. You know, if it's a ten lane road, getting people to go forty is going to be hard, right? <laughs> right. Um, you know, for a bit of a an over exaggerated example, uh, Rick Abley, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, David, I think you, you've hit the nail on the head. Uh, Bill is right, though, that uh, we can set, we can put a post any sign we want on the roadway. And we, there will be other things that would have to be done to ensure we got the general public to get that 85th percentile down. So some kind of traffic calming would need to go along with it if we're going to post a lower speed to get a lower desired speed limit than, let's say, what the road was originally designed for. So that has to go hand in hand. And the only thing is when we look at speed calming, there's a cost associated with it too. So we also have to be very strategic about where we put any of that traffic calming in place. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I'd be curious about, like I, I don't know for a fact, but I suspect that in a lot of the residential subdivisions where we have more narrow roads on street parking, a lot of driveways, generally the roads have more bends and curves in them even though there's an unposted limit of 50 right now, and I'm sure that the town gets many complaints that people are going faster than 50, I suspect a lot of that is perception. And if we were actually to collect speed data on some of these residential roads, we might find that the actual travel speeds are lower. So something like a 40, uh, you know, a 40 area in a residential area might be realistic based on just the existing conditions we have out there. Um, so it could be something to consider. Yeah. Uh, you're you're correct, David. Uh, sorry, sorry, Chair. Uh, <laughs> uh, we did actually a speed study in an Alliston subdivision, and uh, we found exactly what you'd pointed out was that when we actually put out the cameras, we picked up the data, the 85th percentiles, even though it, it is a posted 50, I believe, I believe they were in the mid 40s or low 40s. There were some areas where we had some higher speeds. Uh, but to your point, shorter tangent or shorter lengths of road before you hit a curve, before you come to a curve, uh, allowing on street parking, all those things tend to calm the traffic down. And again, you get that uh, slower speed. And again, if someone's standing at the end of the driveway and a larger vehicle goes by, even if it's at a lower speed because it's mm -hmm. such a large vehicle, it gives you the impression that it's traveling faster. When in reality, I'm sure the sergeant can let us know. Uh, that it's traveling at a very slow rate of speed. It's just that it's such a large, you know, big object going by. It just seems like it's going a lot faster than it really is. Right, right. Yeah, so in, in those cases, you know, um, it's almost free traffic coming, <laughs> right? So in those types of, of residential areas like that where the road has been designed um, to support a lower speed limit, um, you know, those are the types of areas where we could look at perhaps a, a reduced default speed limit in those areas um, without the need for excessive uh, traffic calming or enforcement. So I think that's that's something that we'll have to consider as we go this way. Where can we realistically reduce the speed limit without, you know, having to do all these measures to make sure that it's actually um, followed by, by the drivers? Mm -hmm. uh, Chair, uh, David, sorry. Yeah. A question for you. Like, for example, um, the traffic study that was done in Albert. Um, I'm a resident in Albert. And there was one study done down towards the center of town and another study done down towards uh, the cemeteries. And percentage of vehicles respecting the speed limit was 21% uh, eastbound and 14% westbound. So it doesn't totally match up to this less than the speed limit. Uh, the uh, for the, at least that uh, that scenario, and so where my concern is, 
um, it was presented about reducing the speeds, like in school zones and other safety, uh, community safety zones. But there's got to be, I know we've talked about budgets to the council for uh, consultants that, but there's going to be a pretty substantial budget to allow for other mechanisms, either uh, through the OPP enforcement or for uh, traffic uh, calming. Am I misunderstood? Would that be correct? Or? I mean, I can't speak to the magnitude of, <laughs> of the budget, but um, yeah, I mean, it would definitely be something to consider if, if the town was to consider, you know, a blanket reduction, the speed limit, even just in the urban areas, I would assume that that would potentially, you know, ramp up the need for, for traffic calming in, in certain areas. You know, Albert, you mentioned in particular, it is a long, straight, relatively wide road. So that's something that, that would have, the results would be different there, I think, than if we were to uh, implement this kind of speed limit reduction on one of the, the newer subdivisions, I guess, where you have more of the circuitous roads, um, tighter roads, things like that. So it, it really is context sensitive depending on the street. And, you know, road classification may come into the policy, right? I think Albert is it's probably a collector or an arterial road. It is residential, but it does serve a lot of traffic. Um, so maybe it would get treated differently through a speed limit policy than something that is truly local residential, like I don't know, Swan Street or something small, <laughs> um, you know, in, in one of those subdivisions. So, yeah. but you're right. I mean, um, we would have to be careful and, and treat roads that are, are different differently. I think you could, you can make the argument that Albert, while it is largely residential, is different than uh, a residential street in a, in a small newer subdivision. Any other comments on that or questions for Abley? Okay, seeing none, uh, can I have a mover in a second or two receive the speed limit policy presentation? Moved by Councillor Jax and seconded by Councillor Gabrick. Uh, all those in favor? And that's carried. Um, next item on the agenda, uh, correspondence and information items. We have none. Um, moving on to item four, unfinished business. Uh, the first being the website communication. Uh, Carrie, did you want to just give a, a brief update on what's been going on with that? Certainly. Um, basically, what was discussed, I, didn't, I only received a few um, responses from a few members. So I believe we'll just go with what, uh, I mean, sorry, it's up to you um, as the committee to decide if you want right. to add anything. We can, I can certainly share my screen. I have a draft. I, I don't want um, anyone to get caught up in um, thinking this is a complicated task. It's just more of like a brief outline for residents to go as a, an additional resource. Um, and when I was uh, in a meeting with communications regarding uh, content for the website, um, basically they would like us to um, have things created at a grade eight level. Uh, right now it's at a college level. Um, so um, I might uh, take a, I haven't had a chance to look at it yet to kind of condense what was written, but uh, I would like to do that over the next few days and I could perhaps circulate it. And if anyone has any other suggestions, I just want to get it on the website so that the residents are aware of uh, where to um, go for their concerns to staff or to the committee. Um, just as an aside, at our last meeting, we did have I think it was about 80 views on um, our website. So um, that's that's interesting. It shows that people are interested in what's being said during our meetings. So if anybody has any other comments, um, we can certainly put a motion forth for council to direct staff to um, work alongside with communications to facilitate uh, publishing basically what was written um by David and it was added I think Malcolm added um uh, a little blurb at the end there so do you want to see what I have on my screen and then decide uh, if you want to go ahead okay uh, I'm, I'm maybe I'm misremembering did you 
was there an issue with the length of the content as well? Do we have to shorten it up for the website? We do because you figure all the committees have a little thing on their on their little profile, I guess, mm -hmm. and it doesn't need to be so um, in uh, in depth or it just needs to be a, a short little summary, basically. Yeah. So um, I'll I will just share my screen if that's all right. Oh, and by the way, I am recording this now. It's we're not live, but I'll post it tomorrow when I get to the office. If you need me to swing back and uh, repeat anything from the beginning, I don't think so. I think we're good. Okay, so I'll share my screen. <clears throat> While you're doing that, so I think you suggested that, um, you know, depending on what the committee wants to do, the motion could be, um, you know, that we direct um, staff to work with communication staff to, um, I guess, more or less condense what we have and post on the website. So if we can all confirm at least that we like the spirit of what is written, um, perhaps carry you and, and communications can um, try and condense it a little bit and, and make it fit with the website in keeping with what's been presented with them um, about the other committee. So maybe when, when we're looking at this right now, we can all keep in mind that we don't have to agree on every single word, but if we like the spirit of it, carrying communications will condense it down for us and um, make it appropriate for the town's website. Um, so this is, this is the, the version we looked at last time. I think we can see in blue the changes um i don't think there's a need to go through this line by line since we discussed it if there is if anybody would like to we certainly can um but just looking at the proposed changes i mean i know i don't have any concerns with it frankly um any thoughts or comments from anybody would anybody like to go through it If we're, if we're all in agreement then with the general spirit of it, um, I would be fine um, with the motion being, um, you know, that perhaps that staff collaborate with the communications department uh, to facilitate the outline of the traffic advisory committee um, on the town's website or something to that effect. Did, do you have to write something up and pull it up for us, Carrie, or can we just... No, you can... That was <laughs> basically what... Uh what I was suggesting for the motion. Okay, uh, in that case, do we have yeah. a move? Yeah. Uh, moved by Council Jackson and yeah. seconded by Mr. Hood. And all those in favor? Okay, that's carried. Uh, so thank you, Carrie, for uh, putting finishing touches on that for us. Um, Moving on to the next item on the agenda, the speed limit policy review. Um, so Abley's already given us uh, a great presentation about our current speed limit policy and uh, those Transportation Association of Canada guidelines. Um, I'm sure everybody also saw that, uh, I believe it was Kerry circulated eight uh, speed limit policies to the committee from comparator municipalities. Um, I'm not sure uh, to what degree everybody's been able to look at those uh, and review them. Um, my suggestion was going to be we could have a brief discussion about them today if if we felt that was appropriate, but then perhaps we could maybe break into three or four little subgroups and over the next month before the next meeting, each group could, could take a closer look at a handful of policies rather than everybody trying to read everything because they do get quite wordy. And then the next meeting, uh, a representative from each of those groups can give a, a very brief summary of the presentation or of the policy and uh, maybe provide some pros and cons comparing it to our policy. And then we could have a nice baseline to go off of and, and actually start discussing maybe what we want to recommend for the speed limit policy at the next meeting. Um, but open to 
some thoughts on how we want to proceed with that. I, I, like I said, I don't know how how much detail everybody's gone into reviewing these policies. I'll just make a comment sure, sure. that's okay um <clears throat> i'm wondering um if there is um oh i'll 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 offer a comment and then a quest an ask um if there's people within this committee that are um in the best position from an experience and um comfort level with the policies uh that could expedite the process of reviewing them, looking for outlying or fundamentally different approaches that some of these municipalities have had, or would this be, and be able to summarize it in a, a really succinct and efficient way? Um, or is it going to be laborious, no matter what your level of expertise and comfort and experience is? And I ask that because if we should share the, the equal heavy lifting, if you will, of going through all of these policies, could I please be partnered or paired into a subcommittee with some subject matter experts? Because me just taking a policy from a different municipality and trying to compare and contrast it to ours, um, I'm happy to do the work. I want to make sure that the quality of my output actually lends value and is, um, is sufficient for the objectives we have as a group. Yeah, no, I appreciate that comment. Um, I guess my intent was that, um, you know, each, I think I think it would be fairly simple to provide a, a brief summary of, of what's in the policy, some of the highlights of, of what the policy considers. And then in terms of the pros and cons, you know, my understanding is that this committee is trying to recommend to council what the community wants in a speed limit policy. So I think it would be important for all the committee members to provide some of those pros and cons because it isn't always just the technical side of things that you need to consider these it's you know it's it's that the community feeling what what people are looking for so um I, I think it's still important to to look at it from that lens and then when we all come together you can hash out the the technical what we need to do and what we can't do versus what we would like to do so that was my intent But like I said, I'm not uh, I'm not married to that by any means. If the majority of the committee members feel differently, um, that's fine. <laughs> Councillor uh, Gabrick. Thank you, Chair. Um, I didn't get enough time with all of the policies, but based on Adley's earlier presentation, I'm assuming that a lot of the munis comparator municipalities that we'll be looking at will have similar um, tax suggested speed limit policies already in place. So I think that what we'll find is a lot of um, similar uh, municipalities to ours are following similar guidelines when it comes to setting speed limit policies. So I think it's a good idea that we do break into subcommittees and then come back. And if the findings are that uh, we're in line currently um, with everyone else, then that's great. And then we can take into consideration those special circumstances for those neighborhoods that both Abley has identified and then members of the community have reached out to us uh, individually to look at as well. Mm -hmm. There is, there is a good mix, um, it looks like, of, of different comparative municipalities, um, some small ones, um, or, or at least similar in size to us, and as well as some bigger ones. I think there's Ottawa, Toronto, Vaughan, Hamilton. So I think it'll give a, a good, you know, a broad range of, of approaches that, that different size municipalities are taking. And, and I think there's probably some value in, in comparing what the big cities are doing to the small towns, and, and maybe we can bridge the gap, because I think... New tech's probably a bit in between. Uh, it's growing pretty quick, and it is relatively close to you know the GTA. Um, but yeah, no, I agree one hundred percent with what uh, what you're saying. Any other comments on the approach? I think it's the right. Uh, sorry, Chair. May I? Go ahead. I think it's a, I think it's an excellent approach, and I think that um, what I have heard with respect to um, the sentiment shared by residents 
within the ward that I'm representing and that have taken the time to, you know, speak specifically to it. It's that resounding issue on, um, I don't know it, that the residents, and I, I'm painting everyone with the same brush, but I don't know if people are as specific to um, contributing or, or having a point of view on the policy in and of itself, and more so to sort of to, to, to carry on from what Bill was saying earlier, the, the sentiment is around enforcement and calming um, once the the policy itself is established. It's it's really then about um, what does that look like? What does that mean for the current issues as they are perceived by the residents um, related to speed right now? Mm -hmm. Right. I only I only offer that because I I understood you saying you know it, it, could we um, represent perhaps the public's person um, the contribution to what they would want to see in a policy, um, and I guess my best guess is they they don't. <laughs> The policy, it, you know, it's about enforcement of the policy. I don't know if the contribution to the policy is as important. That's mm. that's the sentiment I've collected. Right. No, I understand what you're saying. I think what I meant more was that, um, you know, you were talking about the technical aspects of it before. Okay. I was just referring to that, you know, within this committee, we're representing the public because we have a lot of non-technical residents. I think that is the representation among us. I'm not saying we need to go out and do a poll or consult people. I think we're representing the community now. Um, so that's that's more what I was getting at, if that, if that makes yes. sense. Okay, perfect, thank you. <laughs> that's good. Uh, if if we're all in agreement then that um, the way to go is to break into some subgroups, um, unfortunately, I think we have an odd number. So it's either gonna be a three groups, a two, 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 and a one, or we can do a, <laughs> a two, two, and a three which is probably the best. I don't think anybody wants to be off completely on their own. Um, and then among, within the group, you know, um, you can take the next couple of weeks, review the assigned uh, comparator policies in detail, discuss amongst yourselves, compare um, to our policy and come up with some pros and cons, things we think we like out of them uh, that maybe we could consider for new tech or things we don't like um, that we, we don't think we'd want to consider. Um, to try and save us some time here, I did, um, in anticipation of this, I tried to break the eight policies that we have into three groups to try and fairly distribute, um, I guess the workload involved in evaluating each of them, as well as to give each group a, a bit of a range of smaller municipalities and large ones. So my proposal was going to be, um, that group one could review uh, Grenville, Vaughan, and Hamilton. Um, group two could be East Guill and Ottawa. And then group three could be Toronto, Essex, and York. So it provides a bit of a, a variety in each group. You look at some big, some small. Um, I know I just listed them off. Maybe we can write them out and pull them up on the screen, Carrie, and then assign names to them, that might be the easiest rather than just discussing it. Certainly. I just want to uh, just also bring up the point that um, staff is here as a resource, not necessarily to be allocating time to um, subcommittees. Oh, so I, my intent so, was that it would be the voting members. Okay. Um, I just wanted to make sure everyone was on the same page. Um, yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. I'll send you a quick email right now, Carrie, with the, the breakdown that I have and you can uh, pull it up on the screen maybe. Okay, I'll pull that up if that's all right. And then I guess we can just more or less sign up for them and try and. Uh, Sorry, I'm still waiting for it to go through. No, no, I, ju I just sent it. Okay. <laughs> I 
Nothing yet? Just got it. There we go. Can you, can everyone see? Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, so, I mean, unless anybody doesn't think those are split up very fairly, I think we can just start uh, signing up for them. I, I Frankly, I'm fine with whatever, so I'll, I can go at the end and uh, get stuck with whatever's left over, but uh, maybe we can just go uh, around and uh, everybody can pick which which group they would like to sign up for. Uh, and I guess maybe we can uh, assign Dave to a group in his absence and just send him an email with an update after Carrie. I will. Uh, Bill, do you have any preference? Um, East Quillenberry, Ottawa, if that's available. They're all available right now. <laughs> okay, I'll take. I'll, I'll participate in East Quillenberry, Ottawa, unless you want me elsewhere. Doesn't matter. No, nope, um, that sounds good. Uh, Sergeant McConnell. Oh, you're on I'll mute. My mic button. I'm all, I'm good now. I, I'll do the same. East Quillenberry and Ottawa. Okay, so we'll, we'll try and keep it at two per, or one can be three. So if there's another person that really wants East Quillen Ottawa, dig up now. <laughs> Councilor Jax, is that a handout for East Quillen Ottawa? Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, Councilor Gabrick, do you have a preference? Um, I'll take the Toronto group, please. Okay. Uh, Christine? I'll take Toronto as well. Okay, and then David and Dave on Grenville, Vaughan, and Hamilton. All right, I'll make this better and circulate yeah, it. That's, that's fine. <laughs> okay, so yeah, if every group then can uh, maybe put a, pull a couple bullet points together summarizing each. Uh, and then a little pros cons list. Um, I think that'll set us up uh, for a good discussion at the next meeting. And I think we'll be in a position where, um, you know, after that, we're probably ready to start really talking about some details uh, for our own speed limit policy. I think we've gone through all the background at that point, and everybody should have a, a good base knowledge to start uh, delving into new tech speed limit policy. Um, any final? Thoughts or comments on this item before we move on to the next one? Okay, seeing none. Uh, I don't think you need a motion for this. Correct me if I'm wrong, Gary. We can just move along. No, we don't. Uh, item five on the agenda is new business. Um, we have nothing on the agenda, but if there's anything anybody would like to raise, please feel free. And, oh, Rick? Yeah, just a reminder that at the next meeting, uh, there'll be a presentation on the uh, automated speed control or speed enforcement. Uh, it sounds like we may actually have uh, one of the suppliers come out and have a chat to this committee, basically under, outlining how they propose or how they can uh, help the community out with it comes to that. It's LAS. It's part of the uh, Municipalities of Ontario group, a subgroup of theirs. So uh, again, it's a government organization who's helping communities like ours get into automated speed enforcement. And they're really helping us uh, focus in on costs and establishing the processes and a lot of the policies that are necessary to go along with that. So they'll be doing a little presentation for us. Okay, great, thank you. Okay. Yep, Bill, you're on, uh, you're on mute. Better? Yep. Okay, sorry, uh, can I, a question to Rick? Yep. Rick, what model is that? One, two, three, or four? The presentation based on that document that was out there. Is that one, two, three, or four? Do you remember? I can't. It's the LAS model. LAS. Um, I can't remember which one it was. Abley, by chance, do you remember which model it was? Might have been two, I'm guessing. Okay. No, no problem. I'll, I'll look. I'll, I'll track it down. Appreciate sorry, it. Sorry, Bill, I didn't have that exact answer for you. No problem. 
Any other questions or a new business? This is a new business item to, uh, directed to the chair. Um, Abley, I saw her doing a, out in the weather doing a survey at uh, King and Young and uh, King. Mm -hmm. uh, we're at uh, intermodal. One of the items on the intermodal, I guess, is looking at. How does when uh, I know I'm jumping like a rabbit all over the place tonight, but how does that work with uh, um, when we do this no left turn off of Albert on the King, where we do no uh, right turn and there's a concrete median in between? How do we control overflow to the Tupper and to Nelson? You're directing that question to me? Uh, I'll direct it to Abley. <laughs> Or Abley or Rick, whoever, uh, whoever. Or whoever. <laughs> I just need to take a look at the map just to understand. Pepper is the road to the directly to the south, east, west, and Nelson is directly to the north, east, west. Tupper gets a lot of overflow now, and I'm just curious how to, are we just spreading the wealth? I guess if we're referring to a TMP recommendation here, that yeah. might not be uh, finalized yet. And, and all those answers might okay. not be available, but Rick, okay. you got something to say. Maybe I'll just jump in here. Uh, Bill, you're right. You were referring to what the TMP was identifying as potential ways of addressing the intersection of King and Young and how we could improve that because that offset intersection, it provides us a lot of traffic challenges. Right. So what we what we brought a report to council was a couple of things was we're going to be looking at the signal timing that's currently there, seeing if we can improve it to address the resident's concern. And Abley was out on site. And I think that's what you saw her doing the other day there. She was with our contractor, seeing if there was a way of maybe making some changes to that controller uh, to, you know, get in place what the resident was asking for. So that's in the works. But the bigger thing that council approved that evening was that as part of next year's budget, we're going to bring forward a budget sheet that identifies that we're going to hire the, we're going to start that process of doing the environmental, the municipal class EA, municipal class environmental assessment. So we're going to start studying that and figuring out what is, there was three options that the uh, TMP put out was what you'd mentioned about putting it, restricting uh, turns onto Albert with the barrier. It talked about uh, building a roundabout there. Uh, it also talked about uh, uh, more of a, a sig uh, a synchronized signals at Albert and then so, so you can provide protected to movements through there. All those things would have to be looked at. And that's what the EA does. And as part of that, I would likely study making sure that we're not, to your point, Bill, moving the problem to somewhere else. That would be what comes out of the EA is when we sort of take a step back and we look at it from bigger picture, make recommendations to council. And then as part of that, we would start implementing those, those works via construction because Something will have to be done there, and the sooner the better, quite honestly. Yep. Does that answer the question, Bill, or have I went off track? Nope, it does well. Okay. okay unless anybody has, oh, Councillor Jax. One more thing. Um, and I and um through you, Chair, because I'm not sure um if it's Carrie that would answer this question based on committee process, but um, I'm wondering, I know often in council, we will direct um, an issue that's before us that is related, you know, to that, that's related to one of the committees that that we all sit appointed to. Um, can we reverse that in this committee? And I feel like the right people are in this virtual room that could offer a layer of insight to um, something that is sort of a timely and relevant topic, which is uh, the need for sidewalks in neighborhoods where they don't currently exist and the benefit of sidewalks as it relates to safety um, and traffic and safety. I'm not sure what the right process is because I know we don't direct counsel and, and I know that there is um, there is some process involved but I feel that this is the right group and, and it's issues like this that are coming um, up within our community and, and settlement areas that are timely and relevant and, and the right people are in this room to say, 
we've got statistics or data that suggests there is um, safety um, that can, you know, it, there can be improved safety within neighborhoods when I believe Sergeant McConnell, it was you that said when we separate people from vehicles as best as possible. So how could we use some of the output from this group in a way that could be brought forth to council and the public um, pertaining to sidewalks? Here. Sorry, I just have to be careful how I phrase this. <laughs> I know it's a hot topic right now. And I know that uh, decisions were made by council recently on certain areas of New Tecumseh and sidewalks. Uh, and there has been a lot of deputation requests with regards to this topic. Um, and what we have been telling uh, residents that it has they have to come forth with new information um, regarding this since council has already made um, their decision. So I'm not sure if, I mean, anyone can speak to council, but I think regarding this topic specifically, if it's specific to where you're thinking, Andrea, um, we'd have to wait for council meetings before this uh, topic is brought back to council for discussion. Fair. Um, I'm just trying, I'm now thinking about how I want to word this. So uh, so I'll just speak informally uh, to this, uh, to our committee, within our committee, and somebody can tell me if I'm speaking out of turn. May I make a suggestion within our committee that we have a clear immediate next step as it pertains to uh, reviewing and updating our policy? Um, if it pleases this group, would we consider um, spending uh, or compiling um, some data and analysis that serves our community with regards to um, a complete streets approach, not just being ideal from a multimodal perspective or, and a, um, uh, you know, uh, not just through urban planning and, uh, and the, the, the master plan, but from a, a traffic and safety perspective as well, that, that might not be um, pertinent for anything that is immediate in that realm, but it's something that could be leveraged or accessed in the future when, when and if um, there is a need to explore sidewalks and, and their benefit from a safety perspective as we continue to move forward with large scale reconstruction or new development plans, et cetera. <laughs> Sorry, I've, I've, I've got a little bit lost along the way there. What what exactly are you, are you asking? Sorry, what, where did you get lost? <laughs> so you're looking for the, or your, your idea was for the committee to, I, I guess originally suggest something to council. Is that what you were? Or not suggest to council, but I, I'm wondering if there is a way that we could um, compile um, the data, and I don't know what the right format is, compile the data that is used to, if it is used to uh, um, enhance the, uh, the, the existing recommendations for adding sidewalks into existing and new neighborhoods. Is there data that supports the benefit from a traffic, as in particular safety perspective? And how can we compile that in a way that can be offered for, for educational purposes, which is one of our mandates within our terms of reference mm -hmm. for our community? Okay, I, I see what you're saying. Still not clear? No, no, I, I, I get you now. <laughs> so I guess you, you're essentially saying you want us to look, um, you're asking if we can look for some support for installing these sidewalks in, in new areas of the community is in a nutshell. 
from a specifically from a traffic and safety perspective. Right, right. Um, sorry, uh, Ch Chairman David, um, yeah. if I could interject, either Toronto's or Ottawa's um, speed policy document has a section on sidewalks and the reduction in, uh, they call it death, uh, leaf, uh, hard uh, injuries and so forth. And there was, it, it indicated a fair uh, reduction in those numbers. Uh, maybe we could incorporate that into our policy plan with our ultimate aim of uh, re reducing fatalities and uh, not, it's not large injuries, uh, severe injuries. I think that's mm -hmm. what the word was. But there, it's either Toronto or uh, Ottawa in their speed policy has a pretty good uh, detail. And I was going to ask the next question: Do we have that even in our with the developers in our new subdivision that they must put at least one sidewalk and follow in the same line as the councillor? Rick, sure. Uh, thank you, Chair Bill. When when the new subdivision goes in or any new development takes place, sidewalks are put in as a as a standard, the minimum standard is you put a sidewalk in on every street on one side, and then on higher volume roads, you may put it on both sides. I think where Councillor Jack is going is there's in reconstruction situations where you have neighborhoods with no sidewalks, and we the town is now coming in and doing a major reconstruction, major rebuild of the road. And our current policies, and, and if I could, Councillor Jacks, so I'll just go on for a minute if you don't mind. And day and chair David, give me some leeway. Our official plan speaks to a complete street approach, and that just basically says that you provide an avenue or an, an, an aisleway for every user of the roadway, be it a pedestrian, be it a cyclist, be it a vehicle, and then bigger, bigger areas being trucks. Uh, so our, our official plan, sort of which guides development and guides the town, says do a complete streets approach. Taking it to the next level, our multimodal tr active transportation master plan says Oh, based on what the official plan says, complete streets need to be then implemented, and it gives us some uh, some direction on how to implement those. But it also says very clearly that new development should be a complete streets approach, and when the town has the opportunity to do reconstruction, there should also be a complete streets approach uh, implemented. More often than not, on these local lower volume local roads, the practical thing they do is you separate the pedestrians from the cars, i.e. put in a sidewalk. And providing that separation gets the pedestrians who are more vulnerable away from the vehicles. On those low volume roads, having cyclists and, and bicycles on that same area, it, it's not, not ideal, but it's not as critical because, again, the volumes are much lower. It, it, the best thing is you provide everyone with their own mode or their own level of power area on the road, but it's not always practical. Uh, and then our engineering standards, again, support that to another extent that, again, we try and separate all those people out. And, and I think what the what the thought here is, and, and I think you, Bill, are on the right track at, to help uh, Councillor Jax is, you know, there are other communities who have sort of documented that, be it Ottawa or the City of Toronto, identifying that there is a, a statistical improvement for uh, if you get hit by a car, if you're on the side, the likelihood of being hit on the by a car on the sidewalks is much less than if you're on the road. I think that's what Councillor Jax is looking for, some support that way. Well, May I, Chair? Please. Go ahead. I'm going to went off on a tangent. Yep. No, that's great. It's great. I and yes, and and I think um, I appreciate that as a review of the understanding that I currently have. What I, I I think Bill, you succinctly said what I'm asking for is: is there an appetite on this committee to add rigor and data to our policy that would speak to? implementation of sidewalk based on the fact that it, there is a, a statistical data point that indicates an improved level of safety or a reduction of fatality or casualty, whatever it is. Are you specifically, I'm assuming you're referring to like a separate policy than the speed limit policy, right? We're not talking about the same policy here, mm -hmm. or, or are we? No, we are. No. No, we're talking about the speed limit bill. The policy that you're speaking of is the speed limit policy, correct? The, that has, you just went on mute. The that uh, from Toronto and from Ottawa, I believe it's more uh, Toronto more so, but it is 
all encompassing in there is included in their policy. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. Do we have an appetite as a committee to include into our policy as we revise it the data that would support from a traffic and safety point of view why reconstruction including sidewalks is in the best interest of safety for our taxpayers i i have no opposition to that i just i'm looking now at um toronto's policy and ottawa's these bigger cities policies that we have the speed limit policy is a small part of the larger document for toronto for example that the, the document that um we're actually looking at that for the speed limit policy is their larger vision zero 2.0 road safety plan update so to, to put that information specifically in a speed limit policy seems a bit out of place okay um, it, with these other cities they've, they've included a, a number of policies in one larger document i think it would be more prudent to i don't know if there's another policy the town has in place that we could add that to or a separate sidewalk policy is there a recommendation in the tmp for a sidewalk policy and do we have one rick do you know do you know off the top of your head? There is a there is a recommendation in the TMP to generate a uh, prioritized sidewalk rest or reconstruction uh, or plan. Uh, having said that, I mean, if the committee were to come up with a, a policy that uh, helps implement or support the fact that sidewalks should be you know used or installed as part of reconstructions, I think it would just support the other documents that the town has that says. We're gonna. This is what we should do. This just provides reinforcement to that. I don't see that being an issue. It'd probably be helpful in the long term. Okay. Yeah, I I, I completely agree as well. Um, like I said, I just I don't think including it in the speed limit policy is the right way to go, just because this is a very focused yeah. policy. But in terms of developing something like that and and perhaps finding another policy that it can be worked into, or creating a standalone policy um, that hasn't existed before. Um, yeah, I think that's a great idea. Great. Rick, did you raise your hand again? No, sorry. Um, in, in terms of, I guess, putting this to action, <laughs> um, Councillor Jackson, did you have a specific timeline in mind here that you're proposing? Uh, do you think it'd be best to finish the speed limit policy first mm -hmm. and then move on? Or are you imagining these running in parallel? Um, keeping in mind that we do have, I think, a few other things in the queue no, I think I mentioned that, Chair. I said, I know we've got some an immediate next step in front of us, and this is something that I think would be helpful. Um, I think that if there is conclusive evidence that there is statistical and statistical data that would show within our communities, because there is a difference, uh, you know, depending on the the data that was, you know, derived from Toronto. It, I mean, we're looking at again the 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 type of road, the the level of traffic and volume on it. Is there a way that we can investigate the um the improvement or mitigation of risk as it pertains to traffic and safety for the town of New Tecumseh and pursue that to a into its own policy, add to an existing policy? I think to Director Vatry's um point, it certainly does complement um the intention and plans that are already in place for creating a, a, a complete street approach to reconstruction okay uh, just two questions to carry on this um the terms of reference for the committee i believe they state the work items are assigned to the committee by council i mean councillor jacks is the one speaking here but do, do we have the ability to add this just to our work plan through a motion at the committee level or does this perhaps have to come up at council and, and be directed to the committee? It would have to go to council. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Just forget it. Oh, uh, Rick. <laughs> Just Rick? forget it. Chair, can I make a recommendation? Sure. And Carrie, help me with this. If I'm off, if I'm off mark, let me know. Could this committee make a recommendation to council as part of our minutes, asking that they endorse us looking at a sidewalk policy at some point, and we can decide, and this committee could decide when do they want to do it. Do they want to do it next? Do they want to do it at the end of the of the assigned uh, tasks, and have council endorse it that way? Would that be an appropriate way of uh, of getting what the committee wants? We can certainly do that. 
Yeah, I, like I said, I have no problem having it added to our work plan. I agree. Um, I just want to make sure we're adding it in the appropriate way. Uh, in that case, then, Carrie, do we need a, a motion to? Yes. Councilor Jax, did you have a motion you wanted to put forward? Um, yes, sure. To, I guess, it, the wording in this case is to recommend to council that um, the traffic advisory committee investigates and produces policy supporting the installation of sidewalks on yes in in existing neighborhoods neighborhoods as part of large scale reconstruction projects. Are you seconding that, Bill? Yeah, uh, and then all those in favor? Okay, that's carried. Uh, any other, Rick? I just suggest that maybe your your motion should also identify when you plan on doing this, just so council has a sense that it's something you do imminently or at the end once you've done the other works that have been assigned to the committee, just so that there's no confusion. My my purely purely my suggestion. Sure. Um, I guess does anybody have any thoughts on on when we should be doing this? I'm trying to remember what else we have on our work plan right now. We've got the speed limit policy, and there was one other. I think we were going to review after that. Carrie, do you recall what it was? Do you have that open? I don't have it readily available. No, unfortunately. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm used to project schedules, uh, construction project schedules. Do we have a master plan of like the calendar wise, what we want to achieve certain times, certain days, or? I don't think we have it um, scheduled out um okay. Okay. too far i think we have a plan for the next meeting uh in terms of the speed limit policy but beyond that um no we don't have a, a schedule per meeting this is what we're going to talk about it it kind of develops naturally okay um, so it's, difficult to, it's difficult to, for councillor jacks to say or anyone to say when this request would be in then would it if we don't have a, a schedule we're working. i think i think it'd be more of a, a general Okay. Well, after we finish one thing, that type of thing. I'm just trying to pull up the terms of reference, Carrie. Oh, sorry, sorry. Rick. sorry. <laughs> I'm just thinking, keeping it very simple and just um, having it allocated within this term. And then it's up to the members to decide once um, all the other projects are completed to move on to the next. Because this term goes to 2020, the end of 2026. Uh, Councillor Gabbard? I think given the um, uh, current circumstances within the community and the prevalency of the discussion surrounding sidewalks, it certainly will also impact additional communities other than the ones that have already been voted on by council. I think um, that the um, after the speed limit policy is concluded that the sidewalk project should be next. Okay. Um, any other comments? I'm just trying to pull up the, just so we're, we're all on the same page. I, I, I don't have any disagreement with that. I'm just trying to recall what, um, what else we have in our work plan, just so we're, we're not forgetting anything. Um, trouble finding it. David, I've, the chair, I've got it right here. Oh, please, Rick. Okay, so the work plan that went to, that was discussed was we were to review engineering report 2023-10, which is the report that was brought forward to do the, or look at this committee. I think that's been completed. The next yep. item is review the multimodal active transportation master plan. Uh, I believe the committee and Adley's done a presentation on that. So I suggest that that would be complete. Yep. Uh, the next one was review the town's current speed limit policy, which is underway. Uh, then after that, it was review the town's traffic calming guidelines. Uh, I think we've more or less done as well. We've had a, uh, I think we've had a presentation on that, haven't we? Or 
Probably not. I, I, I don't well, believe maybe so. I'm determined. Anyway, that, that's a review item. It's not a, um, yep. it's not really any action other than reviewing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then the next one was review council direction on traffic calming request in Victoria Village. And I believe that that's been, yep. Yeah, Councillor Gabrick has brought that back to council. Uh, the next one, the last item that they brought forward was assist in the development of a roundabout policy based on recommendations from the town's multimodal. Okay, so that's plan. that's what I couldn't think of. Um, then yeah, and I think I think the roundabout policy is probably a little bit less pressing. Any roundabout construction is a bit more long term, so I would have no concern with um, you know a sidewalk policy or, or some type of investigation like that being um, perhaps our next work item. Then after we um, develop our recommendations on the speed limit policy. So in, in that case, then Councilor Jack, would you want to amend the motion to include um, some verbiage to that effect? Yes, Carrie, is that easily amendable or do you want me to choke sure. out some new? Yeah, no, 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 it's okay. Um, I will just put, um, I will just add in there following the completion of the um, creation of the speed limit policy. Is that okay? The development of the recommendation. The development of, right. Because we're going back to council with it, right? I will circulate the um, summary report before. And if anyone has any um, amendments they would like to make, then I will, um, then we can do that. Okay. I'm assuming the old, the first vote we did still holds or we need to? It does. Yeah, it still does. <laughs> okay. Um, any other items then? New business. Seeing none. Um, moving on to item six, items for the next agenda. Um, I think we've already discussed, but our next meeting is set for March 14th, 2024. Uh, that's a Thursday at 6 p.m. Carrie has pointed out that that is during March break. Um, so if anybody has any conflicts or or would like to perhaps push it out a week. I think that's something we could discuss. Otherwise, if everybody's fine with March 14th, um, we can leave that meeting as is for 6 p.m. Bill? To the chairman, Duke, is our review of the other municipality traffic uh, speed programs due for that meeting? Yeah, correct. All right, so seeing no concerns with the March 14th date, um, we will then keep uh, the meeting as scheduled. And then moving on to the final item on the agenda, uh, can I please have a motion to adjourn the meeting at 7.29 p.m.? Uh, moved by Councillor Gabrick, seconded by Mr. Hood. Uh, and all those in favor? Everybody. <laughs> all right. Uh, then the meeting is adjourned. Thanks, everyone. And have a good night. Bye, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.